Hi everybody, welcome to our Tuesday TNT. And uh, yes, it's that day. Somebody told the cafe, no, I won't be retiring, I'm plunging on. Now there's a bit of a theme to today's program. It's sort of alcohol and airports and a few other things as well. So uh, let's see what we've got happening. And Bangkok Post reporting that operators want government to ease rule on alcohol sales. Now, quite a lot's been happening in this regard over the past uh, week. We'll get into these stories. The extension of the opening hours of entertainment venues and the liquor tax incentive has made less of a positive impact on tourism than expected. While operators urged the government to consider cancelling the limited hours available for the sale of alcoholic drinks. Last week, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Committee at the Ministry of Public Health rejected lifting the ban on sales of alcohol beverages between 2 and 5 p.m., citing public health and safety concerns. Now, you'd be aware that they were trying to get rid of this uh, 2 till 5 in the afternoon ban on drinking alcohol, although a lot of people seem to be able to get around it. But uh, no, it looks like it's going to stay. And the president of the Association of Chombury Tourism Federation said the prohibition of alcohol sales in the afternoon should be lifted, as the rule always confuses tourists while visiting the country. Well, heaven forbid that Thailand would be exactly the same from where you come from. And he said many foreign tourists generally tend to order alcoholic drinks as part of their meal. And the sales ban on important days in the Buddhist calendar and on election days are also not relevant to them. Is this guy Thai or what? And he said that most tourists rarely drive a vehicle but use public transport or a taxi when getting around, so there should not be any concerns regarding accidents. Instead, the government should strictly enforce the law against driving while under the influence of alcohol. Drunk driving, or drink driving as we say in Australia, well, I mean, they should be doing that anyway. What a load of weird comments. And reported in ThaiPBSWorld.com, Liquor Policy Committee drops plan to extend the sales hours for now. And a Deputy Prime Minister has promised members of an anti-liquor network yesterday that the Liquor Policy Committee will not extend liquor sale hours. And about 300 members of the anti-liquor network from Sukhothai province uh, arrived at the Ministry of Public Health yesterday to voice their opposition to any attempt to revoke an old announcement by a military junta. And the Deputy Prime Minister assured them that the committee will not yet make any uh, decision to extend the liquor sale hours prompting them to burst into a spontaneous applause. They then gave Sobsek a bunch of red roses and thanked him for responding to their call. Usually it's a brown paper bag, but uh, red roses will do the job too. To our Tuesday TNT the 20th of February and it's off to the airports now and well the Bangkok Post reporting that there's changes coming to airports there seem to be continuous changes of the airports most of the changes though involve getting rid of staff and traffic congestion outside the departure halls of Sawanapum uh, where clusters of cars and taxis vie for parking spaces to drop off passengers has become the norm for travellers starting their outgoing journeys from the biggest airport in the country. And for arrivals, long queues at immigration checkpoints and baggage claims have become expected, as broken kiosks and lack of staff have yet to be properly fixed. So I'd be interested to hear from you. What's your experience if you arrived uh, in Thailand over the past, say, three or four months, particularly at Sawanapum Airport? Uh, what's been your experience getting through the queues? Uh, indeed, if you've been flying out of Thailand during that same period, how have you found the dropping off and the check-in experience? I think as far as arrivals concerned, it's a bit of Russian roulette. Uh, because if you happen to arrive at the same time as another seven flights, well, obviously the queues are going to be longer. And the post-pandemic tourism recovery has prompted international and local carriers to ramp up flight frequencies, aiming to reach full capacity as soon as possible to compensate for losses during COVID shutdowns. However, staff shortages among airlines and airports globally have stalled growth. I think a lot of airlines and obviously a lot of airports are struggling to get staff 
coming back after that, or what they call the great resignation, people going, well, maybe I don't have to work anymore. So they're not getting back to their jobs at the airports or the airlines. And airports of Thailand announced last year it will increase passenger service charges at six international airports from the 1st of April 2024. Bet you didn't know about this one. And the additional tax of 30 baht is embedded in ticket prices meaning the new total service charge for passengers is 730 baht. You already pay a departure tax when you leave Thailand of 700 baht. Well, that's going up to 730 baht. And some of you were complaining about a new tax of 300 baht. That was going to be an arrival tax. They're still not going to be doing that for, well, at least a while. In addition to the AOT six airports, that's Suwonapum, Don Nang, uh, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Phuket and Hat Yai, other airports under the Department of Airports will also implement a new levy, with Krabi Airport adding a fee of 16 baht, while the remainder are determining a, an appropriate rate. But whilst they're adding these service charges, it seems the whole idea is to get less service and more machines involved. The staff still serve the self-check-in kiosks and self-service bag drops at Suwonapum Airport to help passengers as the process is relatively new for some of them, unfamiliar with the technology. And depending on the airline you're flying with, uh, the process could be slightly different. So yeah, every time I see people using these kiosks, there always seems to be an attendant trying to sort them through the process. And uh, the Nok Air chief executive said that tech adoption in Thailand is slow compared with airports in Europe and the US, as passengers take time to get used to the technologies in airports. Why would that be? And he estimates the settling in period could be two to three years, and airports can also add capabilities as needed, such as self-boarding, self-bag drop, off-airport processing, and more. So there's gonna be more machines, more software, uh, probably a lot less staff, and I would suggest much longer queues and more confusion. Speaking of airports and airlines, of course the Singapore Air Show is on at the moment. Interesting announcement came out of that yesterday. Reported in Bangkok Post, Singapore to require departing flights to use sustainable fuel from 2026. Well, that's a pretty dramatic headline. Let's see if we can decode that. Well, under the plan announced by Chi Hong Tat at the uh, Changi Aviation Summit on the eve of the Singapore Air Show, the country aims for a 1%, only 1% of this uh, sustainable aviation fuel target from 2026 and plans to raise it to, well, only again, 3 to 5% by 2030, subject to global developments in the wider availability and adoption of SAF. And he says the use of SAF is a critical pathway for the decarbonation of aviation. And SAF can be made either through a synthetic process or from biological materials like used cooking oil or wood chips. Plenty of used cooking oil floating around Thailand. SAF currently accounts for just 0.2% of the jet fuel market. And the aviation industry says this will rise to 65% by 2050 as part of a plan to reach net zero emissions by then. I suspect by 2050 they would have found some totally different method of propelling those planes and it uh, may have nothing to do with avgas at all. And SAF producers complain that they lack certainty about whether fuel they produce will be bought while airlines say there's not enough supply at the right price. SAF currently costs up to five times more than traditional jet fuel. So the aircraft manufacturers and the engine manufacturers under a lot of pressure to try and come up with more sustainable and more environmentally friendly ways of propelling these aeroplanes. But I think uh, there's a long way to go whether this SAF is a, a long term solution, we're yet to see. Well, another aviation story, we go to nationthailand.com. Charter flights proposed as a way of boosting tourism. And the Tourism Ministry will discuss with the Tourism Authority of Thailand ways to stimulate charter flight traffic from China, South Korea, Russia and Europe 
to boost tourism numbers and achieve the Prime Minister's target of 40 million people, which would be the number, same number of people we had back in 2019. And the Ministry will convene a meeting with the TAT, or that would have been yesterday, to monitor the plan to stimulate the market and attract charter flights from both nearby and distant markets. This includes Russia, the Scandinavian region, the Commonwealth of Independent States, certain areas of Europe, South Korea and China, which present the greatest opportunity for recovery. And he said uh, stimulating charter flights is considered a crucial tactic because it can attract international tourists from secondary cities that do not have regular flights, allowing them to visit Thailand. In 2019, the proportion of international tourists travelling on charter flights was around 17 to 20 per cent of the nearly 40 million foreign visitors. However, in 2022, this proportion decreased significantly to only 3%. Well, airline traffic generally dropped a lot in 2022. Therefore, it's imperative to expedite efforts to regain a 15% share of the charter flight market in the current year. And additionally, the Ministry and TAT will assign tasks to the TAT officers responsible for the top 10 international tourist markets with the highest number of travellers to Thailand. And each market is required to achieve a growth of at least 10% or more in the current year. Well, heartening there at least to see that they've got KPIs with all that money they're spending to attract people to Thailand. Now we do have a holiday coming up this weekend, a significant holiday, and the PatiaNews.com reporting Makabucha arrives this Saturday with nationwide alcohol sale ban in Thailand. And this particular day is taken quite seriously by Thais. And Makabucha, the second most important Buddhist day for Thai people, is only a few days away from today, February the 19th. Well, no, it's not on February the 19th. That was just the day they wrote the story. So let's go down a bit further. Makabucha, which falls on this Saturday, February the 24th, commemorates four key events in the Buddha's life, emphasising his teaching and principles. So, uh, here's what you need to know, says the article. There will be an alcohol sale ban, and be aware of the nationwide alcohol sale ban on Makabucha, which starts from midnight on February the 23rd and lasts until midnight on February the 24th. And entertainment places like bars and clubs will not be able to operate normally either, and restaurants, hotels, supermarkets and convenience stores are banned from selling alcohol for 24 hours. Now, there'll be plenty of people out there saying, oh, I know how I can get a drink uh, even when there's an alcohol ban. But there is, a, I think, an understanding on these Buddha holidays that everybody in Thailand will show some respect on that day. And then further down there, respectful behaviour, be mindful of noise levels and avoid disruptive activities. Remember, this is a day of reflection and reverence for many Thais. And tips for enjoying Makabucha, visit a temple, uh, explore local markets, participate in cultural events. So as it says, it's the second most important day in the Buddhist calendar and a day revered by many Thais in a principally Buddhist country. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. That would be a good uh, birthday present for me. Looking forward to having that cheesecake after the program too. Now, ThaiPBSWorld.com reporting Two killed in crushes, hundreds queue for passports in Myanmar. Uh, it's a story that I've been or had on my list for the, really the last week, but literally haven't got around to it. But I think it's uh, important for you to know what's going on there. And two people were killed in a crush outside a passport office in Myanmar yesterday. A rescue worker said as thousands rushed to leave the country to escape a junta military service law. Now, two women aged 52 and uh, 39 died early Monday after hundreds of people surged to get in line at the passport office in Second City, Mandalay. And this related by a rescue worker talking to uh, AFP. And they said there was a ditch near the crowd. They fell into the ditch and died from a lack of oxygen. So why are so many people queuing up at the immigration offices in Myanmar? 
The three years after seizing power in a coup, the military is struggling to crush widespread armed opposition to its rule. And then earlier this month, it said it would enforce a law allowing it to call up all men aged 18 to 35 and women aged 18 to 27 to serve in the military for at least two years. And last week, local media images showed hundreds of people queuing outside the passport office in Mandalay. And in the commercial hub of Yangon, thousands of young men and women queued outside the Thai embassy seeking visas to get out of Myanmar last week. Around 13 million people will be eligible to be called up, a junta spokesperson said last week, though the military only had a capacity to train 50,000 a year. And you can probably bet that at least 90% of them would be opposed to the junta rule in Myanmar. So the basket case continues, and uh, good luck to all those Burmese people trying to get out of the country at the moment. And with that, uh, we thank you very much for joining us today, the 20th of February. I've got a cheesecake to eat. You've got things to do. Have a great Tuesday. Thanks for dropping in. We'll see you tomorrow.